What's going on everybody? It's Andrew from IS Faster and in today's episode we are going to talk about these new rotors that I have on my Lexus ISF. As you can maybe tell, they are not the stock rotors as I've moved on from those. I'll tell you a little bit about why I did that along with price, fitment, and how I've enjoyed these rotors so far. So stay tuned and hope you enjoy this episode. Now, as many of you know, I have started to track my ISF and um, I needed to go from a drilled rotor to a slotted rotor. And I needed to do that for a couple of reasons, mainly because those slotted, uh, the slotted ro rotors should be able to withstand, I think, track abuse a little bit more. I have not ran these on the track yet, so this is kind of just an initial review of just normal driving fitment. But um, I can't, I, I will show you my uh, rotors, my sock OEM rotors that do have the uh, drilled holes in them and what happens to them after what took me five track days to do to them. So um, I, got, I looked at these because I needed something that would last a little bit longer than those did. And I found these. These are actually uh, made by a company called Breaknetic. And um, they have a couple different designs for slot. They have drilled and slotted, but they have a couple different de designs for slotted rotors. And through my research, I actually found out that these are centric blanks. So um, everybody seems to have pretty good reviews on those centric blanks. But I guess Centric sends them to Breaknetic. Breaknetic puts their slots in there. They're just their own design and brands them their own. But um, as far as fitment goes, they have uh, fitted as well as the OEMs do. The size, the diameter is the same. The thickness is the same. They're about 30 millimeters thick. And um, to put them on was just as simple as putting on the OEM rotors. So overall, I've uh, really enjoyed them. Uh, Price-wise, if you buy your OEM rotors from eBay, you know that they're about $100 or so, um, not given any discounts or anything, but average right around $100 a piece. For the fronts, for these, I paid about $140 a piece. So, you know, a little bit more money, but I think in the long run, they will pay for themselves because I will be able to use them for much longer than I, I was able to use my OEM rotors. So here are the Breaknetic rotors and they actually have the same dimensions and sizes and widths as the OEMs and they fit on pretty well. Uh, no issues, pretty easy, but you can see the slots there. There's um, actually three different types of slots that you can get from Breaknetic. You just choose which one. I don't know if there's any real advantage over one over the other. But I think that, you know, maybe it's just a personal preference of which design you like. Um, there is this kind of cracking here, you know, it had some sort of coating that, you know, has peeled off, but I have no worries about that. The OEMs didn't have a coating like this, but they kind of looked this way when you, um, you know, after a couple hundred miles as well. As you can see, I'm using the Project Mu NS400 pads. These are my normal street pads. I use the HC800s for track use. I'll switch them in and out. And these have been bedded in and they work pretty well. There's um, really no difference performance wise that I can tell just from street driving between these and the OEMs. They're, they feel the same, they stop the same. Um, other than the way they look, I couldn't really tell you of any differences that I can feel. The, even the brake dust is the same. You know, these Project Muse are known for being low dust and even with these uh, rotors, there is uh, about the same dust as OEM. So other than the look, it seems to be exactly the same fitment wise, performance wise. So they, uh, they're uh, pretty good in my book. But I will show you right now in this next uh, clip coming up why I decided to go to slotted rotors because of what happened to my drilled rotors. Now here are my OEM rotors. And as you can see, there's a bunch of cracks in all those holes. And this is the reason why I needed to go to slotted rotors. So these cracks forming. Well, the Lexus service manual says that if any of these cracks hit the inner or outer edge, the rotors need to be replaced 
or if any of the cracks are 30 millimeters long, including the hole, which a few of these have made that threshold, then the rotors need to be replaced. Um, here's some of the bigger ones. Then you can see in the center here, this is um, kind of the same thing that looks like what's happening to the brake pedics. So nothing to worry about. Um, I don't think the OEMs had the coating like those did, but it's actually the back side of these rotors that have the worst cracks. So this is what five days of track abuse have done to the stock OEM rotors. And what kind of bummed me out about having to get rid of those OEM rotors is that when I measured them with the micrometer, they actually were measuring right about 50% of their usable life at 29.05 millimeters. They come in at 30 millimeters new, and at 28 millimeters, you're supposed to change them out. For the rears, it's 28 millimeters wide, new, and 26 millimeters is when you're supposed to change them out. But unfortunately, because of the cracks and the um, size of them, I had to, or I chose to change them out and uh, go to these slotted rotors, which hopefully will last, uh, you know, all the way to the 20 millimeter mark. Um, you know, I actually decided to keep the uh, rear stock rotors because they have no signs of cracking. Um, th these, you know, ISF has six piston calipers in the front where most of the braking is done, only two pistons in the rear, so maybe they're not getting as hot. So they have no signs of cracking and you know, maybe eventually when they do get uh, worn enough, then I will switch them to these um, slotted rotors. But for now, I'm just going to keep them and probably use them until they meet that threshold for change. So if you are looking for an option for your ISF other than OEM and you want to go to slots, I would definitely recommend this company, Breaknetic.com. And uh, they did a good job with um, communication, shipping, and uh, made the uh, sale pretty, pretty smooth. Um, I would definitely look into going to slots if you are going to plan on tracking your car. If you're just driving your car on the drag strip or streets, the OEMs are more than enough. I don't think that they would crack under most driving conditions other than the track, at least mine didn't. And um, I would say that if, uh, you know, if you've looked around at all for any options, you know that there are very limited options for the ISF community as far as brake rotors go. The, the, um, there are two-piece sets that you can buy which are very track-focused and I'm sure they're very good um, rotors, but they are a lot of money. And uh, I think these are kind of a little bit of a best of both. You know, they are one-piece, pretty cheap, and they should fulfill the needs of not having a rotor that cracks. I don't know that yet. I haven't ran it at the track, but I would think that it wouldn't crack because it, it, I did move to slotted rotors. Um, this is just an initial review so far just on street driving. They've been great OEM, uh, you know, characteristics. So I'm very pleased with that. And, um, I will do a follow-up once I've got a couple track days under these and see how they've held up. So thank you for watching this uh, initial impressions review and, uh, we'll talk to you soon.